is the Granite Mountain? Uh, you know, I don't know exactly the date, but uh, uh, it was. Uh, that was you before know. you were. Oh, much yeah, older. Oh, yeah, it was like 1910 to 1925, and we have a brick. Uh, they have a monument kind of a deal way up on uh, up by Walkerville, which oh, yes. is up on top of the hill, and and they have bricks in there. Uh, and uh, you can you could buy a brick which we did with our grandfather's name in it, uh, uh, and uh, it's it's up at this monument for the granite. I think it was a it had the more miners were killed in that in that tragedy than than any mi mining tragedy in the U.S. Uh, history. I think uh, yes, uh, I was told. Yeah. Was he was he a miner in Butte at that time? Uh, you know he he wasn't in that. Disaster, you know, he had this other smaller thing happen to him, but but uh, I think he was working there at yeah. probably at the time he probably wasn't working at those particular mines, but uh, he was probably working there then. Um, do you remember any of the games you would play as a kid or what sorts of activities you'd get up to? Oh, yeah, uh, actually, you see, I lived uptown and uh, and everything in Butte at that time was uptown. Uh, you know, uh, Butte is kind of divided between the old uptown now and what they call the flat. And uh, we live out here on the flat now. And uh, but in those days, everything was uptown, and uh, we lived right in the middle of it. And uh, I used to deliver papers. Uh, I had a paper route. Uh, in the morning, and then I would sell papers in the afternoon. They, we, my, uh, Butte had two. Newspapers, the uh, which they still have now, the uh, Montana Standard, which is a morning paper, and then a Butte Daily Post, which used to be an afternoon paper, and I used to sell on the corners. And ah, uh, 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 we, uh, uh, I, you know, I know the uptown so well and can remember it so well. All the little stores that were tucked in, you know, it was just a, it was just really packed. As a matter of fact, we've I've got a. a photograph book here and it shows the uptown just on a regular day I mean there's probably two or three hundred people that you could count uptown uh, you know uh, everybody was up there uh, at one time Butte was uh, population was very close to a hundred thousand earlier than than uh, before I was alive but but uh, and they were all uptown you know living in rooming houses hotels and boarding houses and things like that so Boy, the uptown was really a crowded place. <laughs> Did you have any hobbies when you were younger? Well, I still do. Uh, you know, uh, like I mentioned, uh, my uh, we we had a, a little summer home up at Echo Lake, and it burned down in 1951. And we hired these well, these people to kind of uh, help us build it back, and they showed me at that time how to do plumbing and wiring and things like that. So I've done a lot of that for other people and ourselves. We built this house in 1980, my wife and I. <laughs> we did the wiring, the plumbing, the walls, the ceilings, the windows, everything. And uh, and uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest it for somebody else <laughs> because it took two years out of our lives, and uh, and we almost wound up in divorce court many times. <laughs> But anyway, we built it, and uh, that's kind of our hobby, is kind of doing things like that and building things. Well, now you you know uh, how to fix things. On oh, the yes, right? and, uh, and, and that's <laughs> fortunate and unfortunate because, <laughs> because our kids don't know how to fix things, and, uh, and every time something goes wrong, we get a call. And <laughs> we have now since given our, our summer home to our kids, and... Uh, None of them know how to do anything, so uh, we're still doing all the work up there. <laughs> what kind of entertainment was there? When you were oh, it up? was great. Um, you know, uh, Butte was kind of the focal point. As a matter of fact, um, you probably look it up, but uh, the Bobcat Grizzly game was played in Butte every year. Uh, yeah, it didn't go to Bozeman and Missoula. It was played in Butte, and uh, they had parades. Uh, in those days, people were 
dressed up better. They all had, uh, the women had pom-poms, I recall, and, uh, and uh, oh, it was, a, it was the second biggest weekend in Butte other than New Year's Eve. And uh, they, uh, you know, people used to flock in because it was kind of halfway between Bozeman and Missoula. And uh, of course, we lived uptown and uh, we saw it all. And uh, they played down at Naranchi Stadium uh, where, where they've just uh, remodeled it and reopened it up, as a matter of fact. The Butte High Bulldogs uh, won the state championship there just two weeks ago. But uh, it was a big deal. Uh, uh, St. Patrick's Day is always a big deal in Butte. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, New Year's Eve, uh, they had what they call Meterville, and it's now been taken up by the Berkeley Pit. But uh, all it was was, uh, was uh, cafes and bars. and. Uh, Great music, and everybody would flock to Meterville. It was, uh, it was just kind of, a, kind of a subsidiary of Butte, and uh, but uh, we they had great uh, bands come into town in those days. We had the Columbia Gardens, and maybe you heard about the Columbia Gardens. Uh, they had a dance floor that uh, that uh, we had Tommy Dorsey, we had Jimmy Dorsey, we had. Uh, some of the bigger bands in the country at that time come and they would play at the Columbia Gardens and the place would be half packed. It would be not totally full because it was a huge place uh, built by the Copper Kings. Uh, actually, uh, uh, Clark uh, built mm -hmm. the Columbia Gardens. And uh, it was, Butte was a fun place to be. As a matter of fact, uh, we have friends of ours that lived in Missoula, that were born and raised in Missoula. They live here in Butte. And uh, every time uh, her uncle would say he was coming to Butte, man, she'd try to get on because uh, it was so much more fun over here than it was uh, in, in Missoula. And during the war, i never forget, my mother had this hotel and there was a, uh, there was a detachment of uh, Canadian paratroopers that were that were uh, training over at Fort uh, Harrison over in Helena, and uh, during the war, all of them got killed. As a matter of fact, but uh, every weekend they'd come to Butte uh, when they'd get uh, the weekend off because it was so much more fun. So it was a, a fun place to grow up. Um, like I say, I lived uptown and. And uh, my main place was the YMCA uh, over on about two or three blocks west of where we lived. And then in the summertime, I played baseball down at the Cinders Ballpark, which is not far. So I kind of, kind of uh, traded my time between the YMCA. I owe the YMCA many, many, many hours of, of, uh, of, uh, of delightful fun over there. Uh, so that's great. And were there any particularly Irish um, sports or games that were played? You know, if there were, I I can't recall. Um, uh, you know, all of the Irish, uh, like uh, like Corktown and and uh, and uh, 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 some of the Irish areas up by St. Mary's up on the hill had baseball teams, and they had a great uh, copper league here. As a matter of fact, my uncle. Uh, Pete Thompson was born and raised in Los Angeles, and uh, he uh, was a good athlete. He went to USC and played football there and also played baseball, and he was drafted by the Cleveland Indians in, in the early 20s, and uh, they sent him to a farm club, and where the heck did they send him but to Butte, Montana to play with the Clarks, it was called. And that's where he met my aunt, my aunt and, and my Aunt Mary, and they were married. and. Uh, so they had a really, uh, you know, uh, it wasn't major leagues, it was, uh, you know, minor leagues, but it was a very m spiritual minor league they had here in baseball. Mm -hmm. And they had great hockey, uh, uh, you know, with the ice and everything. They had a, a first class uh, hockey league here. And uh, so, th you know, uh, the Irish love sports and uh, they, we had plenty. <laughs> That's great. Okay, you, you really back, right, huh? we'll, we'll forge ahead. So, 
We talked a little bit about, well, we talked a lot about the boarding houses. What was your housing like when you were growing up? Well, like I say, uh, we lived in a, in a pretty nice little home. My, my father worked for the uh, Postal Service and, uh, in Salt Lake, and uh, he was born in Park City but migrated. Uh, the job was in Salt Lake when we were growing up. And then uh, he caught lung cancer and uh, died, like I say, when I was five and a half years old. And uh, my mother uh, was a native of Butte, and so uh, she sold a house and got a little equity out of the house. And in those days, there was no Social Security or no workman's comp, and they didn't have any, any uh, pension or anything, so it was really tough. She had a little life insurance. She had a little equity in the house, and really that's all she had. And uh, so we, we moved to, back to Butte, and uh, my, my grandmother had a boarding house, and we lived in the boarding house until she, my mother could get her feet under her and, and, and uh, lease a small hotel down on Park Street, and we moved down there. And I went to St. Patrick's uh, grade school and uh, Butte High School and to the University of Montana. And, and you played, you were telling us earlier. I did. Uh, well, I didn't. I was sat on the bench. Um, you know, I was only a freshman and a sophomore, and, uh, and I was a kind of a small guy, but they kept me on the team. and, and uh, I remember when we would play, we played teams like uh, Colorado State in those days, and uh, we'd be Colorado State for the week, and we'd get beat up by the regs, you know, <laughs> all week. They'd practice against us. And, and, uh, but I had a little, uh, a little uh, scholarship, a little football scholarship, and I worked at the uh, laundry at, uh, at the university, and uh, <laughs> we would have to launder, we laundered the, uh, uh, T-shirts and um, sweat socks and chalk straps every day. Not a big deal because we just take them in big bundles and throw them in these huge washer and dryers. And, uh, and then I lived in Jumbo Hall. It was a prefab hall that, well, be f uh, it's kind of hard. It's up University Avenue, but kind of on the right or before you get to the Oval. And, uh, and, and ate at this women or girls women's uh, dormitory it was called east hall and uh, and uh, like i say then i was um, went to the service and spent two years in the service 14 months in korea and uh, what uh, what portion of the service were well you? i had it made uh, you know i i really didn't <laughs> see any action <laughs> uh, i was in the judge Adv advocate center and uh, we, uh, we handled uh, civil law cases and we naturalized citizens. You know, there was a lot of, a lot of Army and, and Air Force personnel that weren't citizens. They were drafted or somehow and they, they were aliens and uh, we naturalized them all and okay. did things like that. I, I can't really uh, say I was in, the, in wow. combat. <laughs> That's all right. You served an important role though regardless. <laughs> My grandfather was in oh, yeah. Korea as well. Yeah. Oh, he was. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 What What years do you know? Gosh, you know, I'm yeah. not. I was there from uh, fif uh, 54, early 54 to the latter 55, and uh, the the shooting was over, yeah. and uh, but they were still kind of hostile to one another. <laughs> See, that's kind of. I I need to go interview him and get the specifics on that because I haven't interviewed him. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. Um, we need to pause for this. Yeah. Yeah, he was over there for a couple of tours of duty and it was one of those things where he, he did see on one of those tours he saw some active combat and it was mm. one of those just you know yeah freak things where he was home for leave because one of his numerous children were being born he had 11 oh, kids oh. and they sent in his and they sent him home huh they sent his platoon in while he was gone and almost all of them Oh, wiped out, and it was just this. Was he in the army or yeah, Marines? Yeah, I, oh. I think it was yeah. uh, regular mm. army. Yeah, yeah. And it was, uh. it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Freak thing. Me, does anyone have coffee? I I think we're good. Oh, okay. Uh, would you like right. No, I'm fine. I'm good. No, I'm good. No, I. I, have some I get up at six. I'm drinking coffee from <laughs> six on. <laughs> um, okay, great. So let's talk a little bit about. Um, I think we covered school pretty well, and. Um, Let's talk a little bit about religious and social practices, any rites or yeah. festivals that you recall. Yeah, we're, we're Roman Catholic. We went to 
St. Patrick's. My, my mother was uh, born and raised, but my father was nothing, but he, uh, he became a Catholic. Uh, and uh, we, st we still have, my grandmother uh, bought a statue uh, down at the Catholic Church there in Salt Lake, and I have to go down and visit that. And I, I understand the statue is still there in, in me, uh, memorial to my father. She, my, uh, uh. and uh, uh, we have uh, I have a cousin uh, Bernard McCarthy was his name, and uh, he was a priest dead. And then we have a an in law which was just our buddy of ours. His name was Father Bernard uh, Sullivan, and uh, he's dead now. He's my sister's brother in law. And, uh, oh, a couple, we had a couple uh, monks in the family. <laughs> well, no, not, uh, uh, no, they were, uh, they were, I'm sorry, they were uh, Saint, uh, Franciscans. And they were uh, of the Morris Row branch that was uh, raised down in San Francisco, two brothers, and they both went into the Franciscan order. And, uh, <sighs> Yeah, well, Father Bud though, but he was a he he was mayor, you know he was a, an in law he wasn't a blood yeah, that's and uh, so that's well, that's about all I think we had uh, in the in the clerical yeah. side of it. <laughs> so you grew up. I mean, you belonged to a pretty recognizably Irish community growing up. Oh, we did. You? Yeah, St. Patrick's School. <laughs> God. Uh, uh, Seemed like uh, you know most of the kids around there were also damn poor, but they're most of them were Catholic uh, or Irish. Um, uh, Butte was kind of segregated. It was kind of a funny thing, and and the Irish were kind of on the west side of Main Street, and then you get on the east side of Main Street, and you'd be more in Italians and and Yugoslavians, and uh, and then up on up on Broadway Street, you'd get into the Finns, uh, the Finnish uh, group. And then way out in Meterville and McQueen, uh, you'd get into uh, more uh, Croatians, and yeah, they used to make all this wine. Oh, it was a great! They would uh, in the fall, uh, they would have, if you can believe this, a whole uh, box car of uh, of grapes would come in, and uh, they could you could make so many gallons of wine, you know, for your own use. And God, uh, it was a great day in Butte. Uh, They'd be down there with wagons and that, uh, loading up their, <laughs> loading up with the, with you know a half a ton of grapes. I don't know how much wine that makes, but uh, they used to have a, a lot of it. And some of my very good friends uh, are Yugoslavian, and uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, well, we have, and some of them are uh, are Serbian. We have a Serbian Orthodox church here. And some of them are Catholic. It depends on what part of Croatia or Yugoslavia you were born in. And um, great. Do you remember any sort of um, traditionally Irish ceremonies like uh, wakes? Or oh, do I remember wakes? Yeah, I mean an Irish wake. You know, is kind of a thing you you don't want to miss before you die. You want to put that on your bucket list. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, everybody says goodbye in good order, and uh, and uh, it's we used to have them up at Dugan Dolan Mortuary up on North Main, but now Dugan has moved out on the flat uh, because <laughs> no one could get up those steep hills anymore, especially in the winter time. But uh, yeah, we used to have uh, uh, not at home, but we used to have them up at awake, and then everybody would would uh, file down to a certain bar down the street, <laughs> finish up the wake down there. And so uh, a person be wake for a couple of days, you know, before they have the funeral, because uh, sometimes they weren't through uh, giving their regards to the poor old deceased. Yeah. That's good. Do you remember anything um, like Keeney? Um, no, you know, I, I, I've seen that in movies and that, but I, we didn't, uh, none of my family I know of sure. did that, you know. No, we, uh, we did have uh, uh, an old aunt 
Her name was Bridget Roddy, and she used to tell uh, fortunes. She was a fortune teller, and she could tell, uh, she could look at your palm, and she could tell that fortune, or she could look at your tea leaves, and she could tell that fortune. And, uh, and she was a sweet old gal. Uh, she was a little crazy. On uh, St. Patrick's Day, she would put out little snacks for the, for the leprechauns now. You know, it didn't run in the family. It was just uh, her, <laughs> but she used to call them the wee people, didn't the she? People. Yeah, and uh, and she put on and she swore that they snacked a little bit. And uh, but uh, if you came from Los Angeles, like my aunt and uncle would, and she would tell the fortune, she would look and say, "Well, you're going on a long journey." Well, they had to get back to Los Angeles, so I mean, it was kind of a slam dunk, you know. <laughs> But uh, she was great at telling uh, fortunes and uh, with the tea leaves or the palm or, you know, and. Uh, well, um, how have you seen, or what changes have you seen in those uh, cultural traditions? Well, they've kind of gone away, you know what I mean? They've, you know, they do with the, you know, the, the original people dying and, and they don't, you know they they don't either pass they don't either pass down these traditions or the younger set doesn't pick them up I don't know but uh, uh, it's it was kind of a f funny you know kind of a really fun place to be around some of these Irish people when they had a few drinks in them and started talking about like I mentioned before earlier some of the fairs they went to and some of the things they did I wish I had had talked more to them about it before they all died. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's still quite the celebration, though. Though it seems like it's a little bit different. Now. Well, yeah. You know, when we were when we were young, um, it was more um, uh, religious. Um, everybody went to church, and we sang, uh, the, you know, the Irish songs of St. Patrick's. And now uh, everybody comes in and gets polluted, you know what I mean? Most of the younger people, they're looking, uh, you know, just for a party. And, and we do have a parade, but uh, it, it's probably not as classy as it was when we were kids. Uh, yeah. um, great. A few more questions here and we'll okay. call it good. Um, do you remember any special sayings that your family had? Uh, well, let me think. <laughs> uh, I can't recall anything, uh, uh, you know, like I say, they taught me some some swear words in Gaelic and, uh, <laughs> and uh, but darn it, I, I wish I had, uh, I don't. The one about roll it over in, in the hand a couple times. Oh yeah, well my, my grandmother has all these sayings, which we have kept, we have kept them dearly, and as a matter of fact, we have even passed them down to our grandkids, like, uh, she would always say, well, well, don't come uh, calling with your hands as long as each other. And what that meant was, is that have something in your hand, like a jug of wine or a loaf of bread or something. Don't come with your two hands as long as each other if you're coming to somebody's house, you know. <laughs> and uh, uh, oh, some of the others were, were just uh, really, uh, really funny. I've got them all written down and uh, Sure. And uh, it was, uh, let me see, some of the others were, uh, oh, anyway, it escapes me at the moment. But uh, she had a, she had a lot of them. And That's great. Yeah. And. Um, did your, did you recall your father having? Um, well, not, you know, I didn't know my father very well. Um, like I say, he died when I was five and a half. And uh, I was just a tyke. As a matter of fact, they told me that I couldn't even look into the coffin. I was too small. They had to lift me up. Um, and so, you know, I, I remember him taking me out fishing and catching the first fish. And uh, other than that, I can't recall. Uh, my grandmother on my father's side lived, uh, stayed up in Park City, and we used to drive up almost every Sunday from uh, Salt Lake up to Park City to visit with her, and she still lived in a little old house up there. It's probably worth a half a mint now with Park City, you know, the, the uh, skiing capital that it is. But uh, 
yeah, I think I think that little old house is still in the family on my father's side. But I, I can't recall him very well. He passed away before I was born, and my mother married later, uh, remarried, and uh, his name was uh, Timothy Dugan. And uh, he, he um, ran a bar here in Butte and, uh, and uh, also helped her in the hotel. Are there any mementos or keepsakes that, you, that have been passed down? Well, uh, I don't know about, I guess my mother bought that um, summer home up there and passed it down to us. <laughs> it burnt down to the ground, but we built it back. Uh, other than that, uh, you know, we didn't have a whole lot of money, so we didn't have any really nice stuff. You know, uh, things were really tough. And, uh, but in those days, everybody, at least at St. Patrick's, were in about the same boat. So we didn't know that we were poor. And uh, when you don't know you're poor, it's not so bad. Uh, uh, it was, uh, I, I see now what kids and that get at Christmas time. And uh, we were lucky if we got a pair of pajamas and a, one game or something like that. You know, and now the, the tree is piled high with them, you know, you know. You know. And uh, so uh, we uh, we had a great life and a great upbringing. You know, she did as best as she could. We were during the war. Uh, we uh, you might have heard some of the things during the war. Uh, World War II was an all-out war. It wasn't like this uh, thing we're going through in Afghanistan or or uh, or uh, Iraq. Uh, people were totally dedicated to the war. We had ration stamps. Uh, we, uh, if you wanted, a, if you wanted a, a pound of steak, you had to take ration stamps down to the butcher shop to buy, you know, to buy the meat. Uh, I remember we got two pair of shoes a year. We had ration stamps for two pair of shoes a year. And, uh, and so they had shoemakers in those days. They, you know, people, fix things. Now they just throw them out, you know, when they get old and they're not working anymore. You toss them out and buy new ones. But in those days, we, they, you'd bring them to a shoemaker and they'd put a new sole or a new heel on your shoe. And uh, you had to have, if you wanted a new pair, you had to have stamps f to do that. You had to have stamps to buy gasoline. Oh, gasoline was really tough. Uh, I don't know. You know, we never had a car, so we didn't have to worry about that. But, uh, huh? And sugar, Lo Lois's mother, grandmother used to can a lot, you know, can straw, you know, preserves and that. And uh, they would trade their their food stamps with their sugar to get more sugar their for, uh, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. So it was a, an all-out thing. I mean, uh, there was victory gardens, people, you know, uh, and uh, everybody, if you had any money at all, you bought war uh, bonds or war stamps. Uh, it was a, an all-out effort, uh, you know, much different than it is today. And, uh, and uh, like I say, Lois's father was over and he won, a, he won the Bronze Star. Uh, he was at Normandy uh, when they invaded Europe. And uh, uh, it was, a, it was a, you know, they didn't call up home like they do now and talk to their loved ones on the telephone or, or email them. Uh, it was, uh, he was gone for four years and they didn't know, hear from him at all. So it was a different kind of a situation, you know. Yeah, so. Uh, uh, what, that, what division was your father in? Well, he was in the engineers. As a matter of fact, he had to, uh, uh, we've got the citation and the medal downstairs. He won the bronze star with, uh, with, to, uh, with an oak leaf cluster, which means two bronze stars. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was in the engineers, and I understand that he had to try to clear off some of the bob wire and some of the barricades that the uh, Germans had set up on those beaches uh, in order to let the infantry, you know, get pass on. And uh, so he was out there right in the middle of it, and. Uh, but uh, I think he came out of it without a scratch. <laughs> so uh, he was very fortunate. Was, were they, were the engineers sent in on 
Yeah, they were right there. And like I say, in order to progress, uh, I understand that the, um, and you know, seeing like shows like uh, Private Ryan and that, uh, that the Germans had uh, had barricades set up, you know, uh, barbed wire barricades that the infantry couldn't penetrate. And he had to actually go in with, with uh, tractors or, you know, some kind of a machine and try to break those up so that they could get past, you know. <clears throat> and he was, uh, he, his name was, uh, last name was Gendel, but his, his mother's name was Mokahi, and, uh, and they, and we're still related to all the Mokahis. They live up in Centerville and up in that area, and we get together with them periodically, and not often, but, you know. So, uh, um, two more questions. Did, did you have any traditional home cures for common ailments within the community or within your home? Oh, <laughs> did we ever? I mean, uh, you know, you'd only go to a doctor if you were almost dying. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if they're traditional or not, but I remember flannel, the, you'd heat flannel and, and put this Vicks Vapor right around your neck if you had a sore throat <laughs> and heat this flannel and tie it on with safety pins around your neck. And uh, 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 some of the stuff that, uh, you know, that were passed down were, were used today. Uh, uh, you know, like chicken soup, uh, it, it helps. It's called a, uh, Jewish penicillin, and uh, it helps with colds and things like that. And uh, so we kind of prescribed to that, and we always signed in on it. But uh, you didn't go to a doctor or a dentist until you were, until it was uh, an emergency. Because <laughs> there was no insurance in those days, you know, you had to pay before you get out the door. Yeah. Were there any superstitions that you come across? Oh, my mother had a lot of superstitions, still does, yeah, like uh, she never put shoes on a bed and uh, uh, of course some of the old time superstitions, but uh, she, they were, you know, Irish people were superstitious people and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, some of the things they did I, I can't recall now, uh, probably will after you leave, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but Anyway, they're, they're, we can they're, always come back. You yeah, know, ready. <laughs> yeah. Like I say, this this aunt of mine, this Bridget Roddy, she was, uh, she had all the superstitions in the world. As a matter of fact, yeah. <laughs> she she believed in everything that was uh, kind of kind of weird <laughs> and uh, Irish. You know, in Iceland, they still employ somebody. The government employs someone to talk to the quote unquote little people. Is that right? No, no, see, no, no well, kidding. then maybe she had something going they, for her. They maybe. send. I mean, they there's this lady that works for the government. Yeah. And she has to go and, and you know make sure that it's okay to build a road through a certain area. Is like that it's right? okay to move this rock to yeah. there. It's, then the little I mean, lady will go to the yeah. little people and find out if it's okay. Yeah, that's huh? yeah well, that's good. So, so there's definitely <laughs> something in common there. Yeah, right. Um, that's great. What would you say are the most striking changes in your life so far? You've seen you've seen some pretty incredible changes. Well, you know, we uh, some of the some of the most changes that I've seen is uh, is uh, the way the younger people in that have changed, uh, progressed. I I don't know if it's progression or not. Uh, we used to dress up. We used to go to church. Um, I mean, boy, mom was uh, just a rip on that. She she would make us. Uh, we we never we never went uh, uh, without our hair and our very best clothes on. And now it seemed like I don't know. Maybe it's just, but but, but young people are just kind of you know whatever goes. And uh, and it it never was that way. Uh, geez, Easter Sunday, uh, boy, uh, even though we couldn't afford it, we had a new coat or a new shirt or something and and uh, people went out of their way to look good and now I don't know some of them go out of their way to look bad <laughs> uh, 
they, you know, they come with holes in their pants to church, and you know, I mean, just kind of anything goes, and and maybe that's the style now, you know. I'm, but but that's one of the biggest changes we've seen, and uh, we were, uh, boy, I mean, you didn't mouth off to your parents and that, or you'd you'd uh, you'd you'd, you'd uh, hear about it, and uh, it just seemed like. Uh, uh, some of the things in school, it's discipline in my opinion, because we went to uh, uh, St. Patrick's and uh, we were taught by the nuns, Sisters of Charity. And I've got a lovely little story to tell. Uh, we had a friend of mine that was later became a pretty good friend, but he moved up from a public school that closed down further south, uh, and uh, it was called the Garfield Public School, and it closed down, and he went up to St. Patrick's. and. Uh, he was in our class, and uh, he didn't know this nun. Her name was Sister Mary Leonard, and uh, boy, but we knew her. And uh, we used to, uh, at St. Patrick's, after you'd go to school all week, uh, on Friday, you'd have to go to what they call Novena of Our Sorrowful Mother down to church, and we just hated Novena, you know, after all, Friday, all week. And so uh, once in a while, because uh, St. Patrick's is, is uh, situated right across the street from the YMCA. The old YMCA is now closed. But they had a swimming pool there and we all had uh, memberships, uh, little memberships. So every once in a while we'd hide out in the, in the boys' room and let the crew go to, uh, to uh, the novena and then we would uh, sneak over and, and go swimming at the Y. Well, we took Jake Sullivan with us. His name was Jake Sullivan. And uh, Jake was a kind of a smart little guy. He, he thought he was a tougher than he was. And uh, she stood us up uh, on Monday morning, uh, sister. Uh, and she said, um, she told, asked me, and I said, oh, I was sick, sister, and I had to go home. And she asked Jake Solomon, she says, Jack Solomon, where were you last Friday when you should have been at Novena? And he hooked his thumbs in his belt. He was a tough little guy. He says, I went over to the Y and took a splash, and she nailed him right on the chin and dropped him right there, picked him up, opened up what they call the cloakroom, it's where you put your coats, and zipped him into the cloakroom, shut the door, and pretend like she, he wasn't even there for about three hours. She opened up the door in the afternoon and she went like this, <laughs> and he came out, she says, uh, Jack Sullivan, where are you going to be next Friday? And he says, I'm going to be at Novena, sister. <laughs> and that was discipline. And uh, boy, those, you know, I, I know that teachers can't do that now, or they'd get sued, or, you know, um, probably um, uh, uh, they'd get terminated. But, but uh, I really feel that younger people need more discipline. You know, they, they have none. Uh, uh, or a little, and uh, I think that's one of the things that I can see so much different than when I was growing up. So, last question. Um, okay. If, if you were to write the history of the Irish in Montana, what would you include for future generations? What do you think is important for them? Well, I, I, would, I would like to research it. We have uh, uh, three bound, leather bound, uh, novels or books downstairs on the history of Montana. And uh, the Irish have really, uh, you know, uh, we have a statue over in Helena, you know, uh, with, uh, with a native Ireland. Uh, he was the first governor of the state of Montana. And I, I, I think the, the Irish have really been very instrumental in, uh, in uh, politics, uh, certainly politics, but uh, you know, the, uh, in Butte, uh, the, uh, the three uh, copper kings, two of them were Irish, Daly and, and, uh, and Clark, and the other was Jewish, Heinz. But, uh, uh, you know, they, they were very instrumental in building in Butte. And uh, so I, 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 would, I would think that uh, the history of Butte and, and trying to retell some of these tales and I, you know, I don't think the younger people, of course, know any of it, and uh, I don't know that they care, but they might. Uh, you know that that the Irish have been very instrumental in 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 uh, kind of getting Montana where it is today. 
hopefully. I think that's everything. Are we I've done? Got. Is there anything else that you'd like I to share? I don't think so. I think we've okay. you've heard it all. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much. Well, good. Well, glad. I uh, do. Uh, how how do I uh, do? I well, see this or uh, you will. Yeah. Um, we'll we'll take it back.